In the business world, there's two ways to calculate profit. One is through cash accounting, which simply measures your profit as the revenue received less the expenses paid. So unless you've actually got the revenue, the cash in your hand, we don't count it as revenue. Uh, conversely, if we haven't paid the actual expense, then we don't record it as an expense. What we want to do though is use what's called accrual accounting, which is a little more thorough because what it does is it looks at revenue earned unless expenses incurred. So you can see it's different to profit in cash accounting. And the main difference is it really doesn't matter whether cash has been received or paid. It's all about has the revenue been earned or the expenses incurred. So this is a more accurate measure of net profit and we're going to try and use accrual accounting wherever we can. So, and the reason why is many transactions overlap reporting periods, e.g. let's say a firm's reporting period runs from six months from the 1st of Jan to the 30th of June. So they're going to calculate their profit here. But on the 1st of January, they pay $1,200 for insurance for the next 12 months. So if it's $1,200 for 12 months insurance paid during January, well, that must mean in cash accounting, the expense paid is $1,200 because we looked at the expense has actually been paid. So if it's been paid, all of it is uh, classified as an expense in cash accounting. Under accrual accounting though, we're going to be a little more thorough and look at what's actually been incurred. Incurred means used up. So if we looked at that insurance payment, yes, it's $1,200, but it's only $100 for each month. So by the end of June, we've only used up six months worth of insurance at $100 a month. So we'd say the expense is only $600. Another reason why we use accrual accounting is because many uh, transactions are on credit. E.g. during March, we had credit sales of $2,000, but we're not going to collect those for another six weeks. Uh, also, a debtor from February paid us $600. So what we need to do is calculate our revenue. So under cash accounting, we're just going to look at how much revenue have I received. So in March, I'd actually record revenue of $600. And that's not correct because it's actually a sale from February. I'm not matching my reporting periods correctly. I'm recording a February sale as a March sale just because I got the money. Under accrual accounting though, we're going to say the revenue earned is $2,000. It's actually just the credit sales for this month. It doesn't matter that they haven't been received we still include them. Likewise, February's credit sale, even though we get the money during this period of March, we don't count it as a sale or a revenue because it hasn't been earned in March. Another possible difference between the two is when we have depreciation. E.g., we depreciated a vehicle for $250 during November. So calculating our profit for November, under cash accounting, the expense paid is zero. Under accrual accounting, we've actually got an expense incurred of 250. So obviously the most accurate one is the accrual accounting figure because it's actually recognizing the expense that's been incurred. I've used the vehicle, so therefore I should recognize an expense. Under cash accounting, because nothing was paid, there's no expense and that can be misleading. So what we've got is a bunch of transactions which we've been through before where we look at their impact on cash and then accrual accounting. So looking at cash sales, that'll be recognized in cash accounting and accrual accounting, it's both received and uh, earned. Under credit or credit sales, they wouldn't be recorded under cash accounting because they haven't been received, but under accrual accounting they would. Cost of sales, well, there's no cash actually paid, however it is an expense. All the expenses that we pay for this period in cash, they'll be recognized in both. But expenses that are incurred on credit, e.g. maybe the rent is used this period but not paid for next period, won't go in cash accounting but will go in accrued accounting. Uh, receipts from debtors, they are money that we are receiving but they're not revenue for this period. They're actually the sales already been made. Conversely, payments to creditors will have the same effect. When we pay the money, it's recorded under cash accounting but under accrual accounting, that's not an expense. Capital contributions increase cash, but they don't uh, affect accrual accounting because they're not revenue. And drawings, likewise, are expenses. Any GST collected or paid is recognized in cash accounting. Under accrual accounting, that's not a revenue or an expense. And depreciation is the opposite. There's no cash changing hands, so we wouldn't recognize it in cash accounting, but we would call it an expense because it has been incurred under accrual accounting. Discount revenue and expense are the same. Interest revenue, uh, assuming it's been received would, and been paid, would go in both. 
Money borrowed from a bank is money that we've received, but it's not a revenue. Loan repayments is money that we've paid, but it's not an expense. And we might buy non-current assets. So if we pay cash for that, that's an item under cash accounting, but under accrual accounting, that's not an expense. Stock gains and losses from chapter nine, they actually aren't affecting our cash balance, so they wouldn't be recorded under cash accounting. Under accrual accounting though, we know we need them to calculate profit because we've got a revenue or an expense.